Well, fellas, so far it's fair to say you've even surprised me with the start to the season, honestly. Team dynamics, know you guys are still trying to figure things out together. But three wins from our first four games. It's really good to try and keep this going against Brisbane and Melbourne City. And some of you might get selected for the All Whites. Sound good? Hello everyone and welcome to the third episode of the New Zealand Builder Nation here on Sean Does FM with both the All Whites and with AFC Auckland. I hope you're doing well and coming up today either side of an international break. We will take on Paraguay and Scotland away this time with a team that we've actually been able to select ourselves. First up it's a bus trip over in Brisbane as we take on the Raw at Suncorp Stadium and then off the back of that international break we do host Melbourne City, one of the teams under the Manchester City group. So if you're looking forward to all that coming up in today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video, and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. It makes sure you do not miss a episode of this new series. But in yesterday's one, we unveiled our squad and also played our first two games with AFC Auckland in this promotion relegation A-League. If you missed that one, I'll leave a link to it. Over in the top right corner, we did pick up some decent results there, picking up a win away against Western United before a 2-1 defeat at Mount Smart against the defending champions. In the Central Coast Mariners, since then, things have actually continued to go very well for us two games. And surprisingly, we picked up two wins, albeit the second one, not too surprising the way the AI managers are going with those other new teams in the A-League. But first up, we took on the Newcastle Jets away from home. And this was a game that we actually dominated from the get-go here in the black this time. Newcastle Jets in the golden blue and green tour. I mean, off the back of a little bit of a rough start in yesterday's episode, was very good for us here at the two-minute mark. He puts a goal away there to give us a 1-0 lead and a penalty right on the half-hour mark. He slots that one away and we hold on to pick up a very comfortable 2-0 win. As you can see, Newcastle, quite a defensive formation. Don't think it worked for them. Thankfully, our 4-2-3-1 vertical tiki taker does look like it will work for us fairly well. I did think that playing with the 4-2-3-1 instead of the 4-3-3 for this game with all those defenders would be a good idea. And thankfully, it did pay off analysis-wise. As you can see, in fact, match stats is what we want to go to. Very dominant performance. And thankfully, we do pick up our second win in three games. And so far, two away games over in Australia and two wins for us at AFC Auckland. And then we picked up our first one back at Mount Smart Stadium. will be at this time a little bit more expected as Canberra United, one of the new teams, Steve Corica in charge. Of course, in real life, he will be the new Auckland A-League team manager. But the AI managers, still not very good at organising their teams, despite the fact we've now gone past transfer deadline day. We'll go to the season preview, and we'll try and show you guys the players in their squads. And you can see there's some blank spaces. So they're going to be playing with greyed out players up until the January transfer window which does seem a little bit silly. does look like the AI manager is not too good when they do have to build a team from scratch. The Darwin Cyclones, pretty similar as well to be for the Red Cliff Waves, who are right down the bottom, actually have a full squad of players, a fair job there to their manager, but the other two haven't filled out their squads, which does seem like a pretty big risk. And thankfully, we did make the most of that when we took on Canberra United at Mount Smart. This was a pretty comfortable win, so don't think we need to show you guys the highlights from this game, we picked up three goals in the first half, one through Ahitaran and two through Tormin. Again, one from the penalty spot. They did grab one back during the first half to make it 2-1, but we went to halftime with a 3-1 lead. In fact, I tell the light was 4-1 because Winston Reid, he scored his first goal for the club 10 minutes before Tormin got that one. In injury time, we also gave away a penalty in the second half, which Collins did put away for Canberra United. They were playing this one with a 4-4-2, but this a very comfortable win. And that means we're on nine points from our first four games in the A-League and actually in quite a nice position on the A-League table in 4-4, but it's still very early days. We'll see how we get on today against two of the more established teams in the competition, albeit so far doing quite well in those games prior to taking on Canberra United, but already... Interesting to see down near the bottom, Darwin, Redcliffe and Canberra all in danger of going straight down to the National Second Division. But very good start for us here. Hopefully we can keep that going and just establish ourselves in the A-League in this first season. And from then, start to focus a little bit more on the Builder Nation side of this challenge. Try and bring some players in who will hopefully strengthen up the national team before we play this first game of today's episode, which is away at Brisbane who have had a bit of a rough start. Two draws 
They are against Newcastle at home and West United away as well as losses to the Perth Glory and Sydney FC. So based on form, this is a game that you actually probably argue despite the fact it's away from home, we might have a chance to get something out of at Suncorp Stadium. But before then, in between these two games, in today's episode, we have got an international break. And for the first time, we were able to select our New Zealand team, unlike before the first episode, because we jumped in a little bit too late. And this is the squad that we did select. So as you can see, a couple of quite promising goalkeepers in there, in particular Alex Paulson. We're going to look to try and give him his first cap in this upcoming international break. In real life, he's probably been the best goalkeeper in the A-League this season so far. Been really good coming in for Oli Sale, who did leave for the Perth Glory, but he's quite promising. Want to see what he can do as a long-term option in between the sticks for the national team. Also got Michael Vood over someone like Stefan Marinovic as well, seeing as he's got a little bit of potential. Here's the Austin Theory lookalike. Also, Oli Sale still in there. He is the best of the rest, but to be fair, don't know if he's much of a long-term prospect. Also, Tim Payne and Callan Elliott from AFC Auckland. As the right-back, centre-back-wise, Michael Boxall comes in because of some injuries to some other players, but also Lucas Kelly, healed a player who's been decent early stages in real life for the Phoenix this season. He's another quite promising player, 18-year-old, who can cover centre-back and left-back with him being 1.98 metres tall. Definitely think he's a decent long-term centre-back option. That could be quite a good future pairing if we put him alongside someone like Tyler Binden with that near five-star potential from Reading, the 18-year-old. And also in the mix from the MLS is Bill Tui Loma as well, the best of our centre-backs. On current ability, his left-back options, Libby Kikache is obviously the starter, but James McGarry from Aberdeen will be the backup, can also play as a left winger. The midfield, pretty similar to what it was, I think, when we did get that squad handed to us in the first episode. Rufer and Joe Bell as our DM ball wing midfield options, and I think as the deep-lying playmakers with someone like Marco Stamanek or Ryan Thomas or even Matty Garbutt, who can also play up front, but this time might not be needed because Chris Wood does return from that injury. It does mean that Ben Wayne now is probably the backup striker in terms of the wings. These are quite similar to that first episode as well. Logan Rogerson, and I think it will be Sarpreet Singh to try and cover out right. On the left-hand side, Cullen McCowett and Elijah Just. Not too much change from that first squad, but a couple of players coming back from injury and also trying to give some young promising players some game time in the main national teams. So hopefully they can build some good partnerships, get used to whatever system that we do decide to use. And hopefully that will mean we can start to pick up some decent results eventually and make our way up those world rankings or at the very least get ourselves in good shape before we eventually make our way. I think it's next year in game to the OFC Nations Cup which is our World Cup qualifying tournament. But first up today, we are taking on the Brisbane Roar, and that does mean a bus trip over in Brisbane as we look to make our way to Suncorp Stadium. And having done a little bit of research from where teams did stay at the Women's World Cup last year, I think this will be the place that we want to stay when we are in Brisbane. This is where the Australian women's team did stay for their Suncorp Stadium games. It is the Ridges South Bank Brisbane. As you can see, quite a tidy hotel, quite an interesting shape there. Almost Marina Bay sounds like from Singapore, I want to say, apart from the fact it's just one and it's nowhere near as tall, but does look like a decent hotel. You can see the rooms look very tight. There's even some couches for players to relax and play some PlayStation or whatever before they do get into game day. Also, the toilets and everything do look quite nice. There's places to eat and drink downstairs. The CBD cafe, bar and dining. Very clever there. Brisbane does look like it might go off at night time. And also they've got some meeting event places we do want to have a team meeting before and if anyone wants to get married they can do that as well albeit hopefully not while they are on club g but we're going to make our way to some corpse stadium it is only about a five minute drive and looking at the directions not a lot that we go past but we'll stop in when interesting things do take place but there you can see that is the path that we'll be taking we're going past the state library and apart from that a bridge and not too much there's a mcdonald's nearby and also a 4x of course 4x Suncorp Stadium, State of Origin, that's probably where you know that name from, but hopefully this will be a nice easy trip to Suncorp Stadium, which to be fair is a decent ground. And this is our starting point, there you can see that CBD cafe bar dining thing that's down the bottom of our hotel and up there, you can start to see the shapes there of that Ridges Hotel that we are staying in. I'm pretty sure we start to make our way down this one-way street here only going 40 kilometers an hour. And still we're making our way down Gray Street now that we've got out of the way of the big shadow of our hotel to beefy. This might not have been the best choice if it's at this time where these photos were taken, because it does seem like there's quite a bit of construction 
might not be the best idea, might be a sloppy performance coming up if that's going to have an impact on our boys. But we keep going here towards the bridge to get over to the other side of the river. And getting closer to the river, I think we found where the boys are going to hang out most mornings. There's a coffee shop, I believe that must be called Sips. Otherwise, that's a really strange name for some other place. And also on the right hand side, there's the Queensland Museum. But yet again, a bit of construction or at least roadworks going on here down Grey Street. So not really ideal picking of a location there from me. Hopefully in real life, it's in a bit better nick now. And unfortunately to skip the Library of Queensland, which to be fair might have been a bit boring anyway, because unfortunately Google Maps, this clicking system, doesn't always work too well. But here's the bridge that we go over to make our way to the other side of the city. Quite picturesque, and we'll make our way over this. If we can, as you can see, these bus trips might need to be binned off soon just for stadium tours, because it's not looking too good when I try and actually make my way to the stadium. Might actually drown the boys if I try and go across this river. So I think that might be the end of those type of bus trips because it's been a couple of times that's happened to me now. It's taken way too long to recall. But here's some court stadium. As you can see from this angle, it looks pretty average. Looks like a pretty bricky outside. A little bit of tinny mesh stuff there, steel stuff. Doesn't look too great from this angle. But we'll start to make our way around the rest of the stadium. There you can see what's across the road. Pottery supplies, which is an interesting choice. There's a snooker cafe advertisement though. That might be a bit more of a go before a sports game. We'll just check out here the outside of Suncorp. Is that an entrance? It probably is usually, but from the outside, honestly, was expecting a little bit more from Suncorp Stadium. Maybe not been there in real life. We'll make our way down here. This side still looking a little bit boring. There you can see a Broncos poster. That's probably the most famous team who does play at Suncorp Stadium, apart from the Queensland Rugby League team itself or State of Origin. Start to make our way around the stadium a little bit more now. To the right hand side, there's another entrance which does look a little bit better, a little bit less industrial, I think the word would be. But honestly, the outside of the stadium isn't overly inspiring at the moment here in Brisbane. We'll just try and make our way to the other side of it once we get through this tunnel of Google Maps. Will let me, which it looks like it might not. Oh no, eventually we can actually get there. And I've got lost again. So I think that was the tour of the outside of Suncorp Stadium. It didn't look that great, honestly but I do know that there's actually some decent statues outside of some rugby league players, especially the state of origin ones from Queensland. But now we can have a look at the inside of the stadium. And this is what it does look like when it's packed, albeit this was for a rugby league game. And it looks like by the image quality, not too great. Must've been a while ago if people have still got Scotty Prince jerseys on, but there's what some court stadium does look like on the inside. Better say, looks a lot nicer on the inside than the outside. Decent rectangular stadium quite nice for football games, which can be a little bit of a rarity down here in Australia and especially in New Zealand as well. We've got some other pictures. There's one here of an actual A-League game taking place. So I think that's a bit more appropriate for what will be going on in this episode. It might actually be a Matildas game by the look of it, but either way, that's what it looks like when there's a football game on. Probably not as many fans as for the rugby league and some other images of the stadium there. You can see it again in rugby league mode. There it is in Ed Sheeran concert mode. We've got the statues on the outside. I dare say that one is Mel Meninga. Indeed it is. That one, Wally Lewis with the State of Origin trophy, as I said. Bit of a rugby league hotspot is Suncorp Stadium in Brisbane. There's a better look of the outside of the ground where it looks a little bit better than where we were driving before with those images we were getting from Street View. There you can see a bit of a better entrance as well. That must be from the other side before I got lost. Going forward a bit more at night time glows up quite nicely, doesn't look nearly as bad as it did through what we saw before when in our bus. And there it is with a fan stampede on the field. Hopefully the AFC Auckland supporters can do one of those after we beat the Brisbane Raw here. If we can get the job done and one more of the outside of Suncorp Stadium, which from these images looked a lot better than it did when we were getting to the ground in our bus. But that's the bus trip to Suncorp Stadium, albeit the bus trip now might get binned off, might just be a bit of a stadium tour because Google Maps Street View the clicks don't go exactly where I want them to, but we'll come back shortly and hopefully pick up yet another win in the A-League as we take on the Brisbane Roar at Suncorp Stadium. And here are the team sheets for our first game in today's episode at Suncorp. As you saw before, there are the Brisbane Roar in a little bit of mixed form, and they come to this one in a pretty similar shape to what Newcastle played when we bet them, hopefully a similar result. Now, we've got some players coming back for today's episode. Lobo at left back, Sinclair on the right wing, and also going to be staying bazookas instead of probably our best option up front in Hassan Jallo, who's been a little bit average so far. So we'll see what those New Zealand trio can do at left back, right wing, and up front and hopefully continue on our winning ways. 
And just making our way now past the half hour mark in this game, and so far this has been up to very little to be fair. This vertical Tiki Taka does look like sometimes we don't get that many highlights in games, but to be fair, getting the job done for us, we're keeping hold of the ball nicely, but unfortunately, just as I'm saying that, first highlight is a throw-in to the home team in the orange with the brown shorts, but thankfully, they try and flick that one on it, and Mitchell can control it, albeit we pump it deep, don't find a teammate, but thankfully, Mitchell plays that one for two tall men, albeit loose pass off the back of some good performances off camera since those first two games in yesterday's episode, and a chance here for the Brisbane Roar to do something somewhat. On the counter-attack, Hall there with a chance, I think that was, but thankfully, not too sure if Basilage got a touch on that, but comes off the post, so a good chance there for the Roar so far, the only highlight we've seen in the first half. Apart from that, though, stats-wise, we've actually been the team who have been on the front foot. One more highlight, though, in the first half, and unfortunately, the Roar from a goal kick do keep hold of the ball. Of course, this is one of Ange Postacoglu's former teams. He did a very good job with these guys in the A-League before he did go over to Japan and the Yokohama Marinos, but they try and play this one forward, do the Brisbane Roar. It finds its way to Melk, but yet again, a bit of a scratchy pass there, so it does look like maybe those construction works on that Gray Street might be impacting us here. We do look just a little bit sloppy on the ball in this first half. Hopefully, we can just hold on and get into the sheds locked up at nil all. Otherwise, that would not be ideal. Burt Gilroy there does brilliantly to turn our defence inside out. His first goal of the season. And unfortunately, what I wanted to happen didn't quite come off. We're going to be 1-0 down at half time. But to be fair, in the highlights that we've been seeing, we've been a bit sloppy trying to find teammates despite the fact we are doing short passing. But Burt Gilroy there controls that ball nicely and just turns our defenders there inside out. Bit of help from the inside of the post but it does beat Basilage and find its way into the back of the net, and that will do it for halftime. 1-0 down to BFR XG, not too great. We've had more shots, but unfortunately not very good ones by the looks of it. Those two chances we saw the Brisbane Roar were quite good ones. We're going to make some subs here at halftime. Callan Elliott down to a bit of a deep yellow heart with international duty coming up. We'll take him off for Negro, and also both our wingers do look to be struggling a little bit, so Ihataran can come on for Sinclair, and also we might bring on Jello for Bazooka's Tormin in quite good form, we'll see if he can do a bit better in the second half, and also we'll check those wingers onto attack as well, and just see if that can try and help us get back into this game, but to be fair, not a great first half, we'll get the second one underway, 1-0 behind. And nice and early in the second half, there's a free kick here in our favour, Oxbra takes this short, which can sometimes lead to goals here in FM24, hopefully that will be the case again here, albeit we're starting to play this one backwards. Negro plays that one forward to Winston Reid off the mark these days, having scored that goal against Canberra. Now, Hitaran off the bench does really well. He squares that nicely for Stefan Malk. I think that's quite similar to the first goal that we scored with AFC Auckland in yesterday's episode. But thankfully, nice and early in the second half off the back of a bit of a rev up at half time, we do make it one all. And hopefully now might kick on and grab a result here. But Mohamed Hitaran already looking to be a pretty good right wing option for us. Coming off the bench, some immediate impact as he picks up an assist, sets up Stefan Malk, and he makes it 1 all. And 10 minutes off the back of that equalised now, a free kick for us here in a very dangerous position. Sullivan there at the far post, but unfortunately his header goes just wide, starting to get some momentum though as it's locked up at 1 all. And in fact, right off the back of that chance with that far post header to Sullivan, now Tormain is on a 6.4, and also it doesn't show here, but has just picked up a yellow card to Jamal Rainier's can come on and play up front the Rocket Man and Jello. He can move out to the left wing for this last half hour. Still locked up at one all. And just making our way now to the last 15 minutes of this game. Not much has happened off the back of those previous substitutions. But now Nathan Lobo is down to a red heart. Just one sub left. Also we've got Oxford but Lobo on a worse rating. Michael Neal can come on for him. So we'll try and freshen up those wing pack positions. And also might be worth chucking Stefan Malk here onto attack. Having already grabbed a goal. He's so far looking like one of our better goal-scoring threats here at AFC Auckland instead of our strikers. We'll just see here, just debating if we should go to a higher tempo. Might save that for the last couple of minutes, but we'll see if those changes make a difference. And there is a highlight we look to play out from the back, off the back of a goal kick taken short. Neil plays that one forward to Malk now on a tackle, be a poor touch there. I think that was from Jello down that left-hand side. The Jello shot not quite on his game today. It does look like, but it is now Aldred on the ball as the Brisbane Roar are going to look here 
for a winner at home and to be fair, start to find a bit of space, but thankfully Oxborough gets in there before the goal scorer for the Raw got on the ball. Now it's a Hitarin who finds Lainez fresh off the bench. What can the Rocket Man do now? Negro plays that one forward to a Hitarin, gets in behind. It's a tight angle, forces a decent save there out of the Raw goalkeeper, but unfortunately just too tight an angle. Can't quite put that one away, but certainly a lot better here in the second half than the first half. That's been a slight theme here so far in the games we've shown on camera with AFC Auckland, but unfortunately nothing doing from that subsequent corner, and it's still one all as we start to make our way to the last couple of minutes of this game, and now with five minutes left, might be time for us to try and up the tempo just to see if that might help us create a few more chances, one all with only a couple of minutes left. And now we're getting deep into this game off the back of trying to up our tempo. As you can see, stats-wise, this has been a pretty even game, so I suppose a draw would not be an unfair result, and it looks like that is what it's going to be. It's a one-all draw for us here at Suncorp Stadium. Unfortunately, that late goal we conceded in the first half, some good work from Burt Gilroy to pretty much turn our defence inside out and give them a 1-0 lead at halftime, which based on the highlights we saw from that first half, they probably deserve certainly better for us in the second half, and thankfully, Mohamed Ihatarin with some good bench impact coming on for Sinclair sets up the farm melt, but that is a one or draw against the team with a pretty defensive shape. Not too disappointed with that away from home. We continue to pick up the points, which I dare say is a lot better than those other new teams are doing. So I think at the moment, looking quite good to hopefully make sure we should not be in a relegation battle. That would be a nice first season for us here with this new A-League team out of Auckland. We'll tell the guys Pretty happy with that, especially seeing as we didn't play as well as I know that we can, especially in those last couple of games, but it does keep us in the top half of the table there. You can see some of the other results. MacArthur crashing the Central Coast, which is a bit surprising. Up until then, they were unbeaten in the A-League and also the new teams, they continue to struggle. But solid result there first up in today's episode. One all at Suncorp against the Brisbane Raw. We'll come back shortly, show you guys the results from the international break before we take on Melbourne City back at Mount Smart. And here are the highlights from those two fixtures that we did play with New Zealand during that international break. And unfortunately, in the first half of this game at Paraguay, we got absolutely battered in Sanabria here. Rather fortunately, they do put that one in the back of the net. Not too sure here how that ball did find its way to him. But to be fair, Paraguay on the front foot. But thankfully off the back of that, we kept things at that scoreline. And late on, bit of a defensive blunder there at the back from Paraguay of 20 minutes left. And Logan Rogerson off the bench for Sarpreet Singh at right wing makes the most of it and tucks it away. And despite the fact that it was our only shot on target, we pick up a one or draw. A pretty good result considering Paraguay are ranked up in 47th compared to our position of 100 seconds. So that a nice result for us. Also, did try the vertical tiki taker here, albeit with the difference of Ryan Thomas being a bit further forward than our usual deep lying playmaker. But that was a decent result away against Paraguay. And off the back of that, we then went to Hampton Park to take on Scotland. And this game stats was actually pretty similar to that Paraguay game, but unfortunately this time could not find a way back from an early strike from just on the edge of the box there through Shea Adams coming up here. A very acrobatic celebration that does get cut off. Actually got more shots on target this time, but apart from that, very similar game. But this time we suffer a 1-0 defeat to be fair. Did go back to the 4-2-3-1 instead of that slightly further forward midfielder seeing as it did look like it served Clayton Lewis more a bit of a weaker defensive midfield for this game and still struggling to get a tune out of Callum McCowart and to be fair Chris Wood as well since he came back for this break which is a bit concerning considering that Chris Wood is our best player on this New Zealand team but not too bad the results considering the rankings of those two teams Scotland they are up further in 31st on the world rankings but a draw and a loss in that international window the same as from our first one where we took on Syria and England albeit I think that result against Paraguay might be the best one so far a lot higher up the rankings than Syria were and unfortunately those results not enough for us to move up the world rankings we are still joint and 102nd albeit the next international window that we do have some more winnable games I think Algeria away that might be tough but then Uzbekistan that looks like the most winnable game that we've had since that first one against Syria as they are down in 71st. That could be one that we could target to hopefully pick up our first win as New Zealand manager. And we do take on the White Wolves. But next up on camera for us is the A-League with AFC Auckland. And we take on City these days. We have dropped down to fifth on the A-League table, but still in a pretty good position, especially compared to those new teams who don't have the full squads. But next up, we take on a team 
under the City Group in Melbourne City. They used to be called the Melbourne Heart before that, but they've got some pretty decent players on their books, including their captain, Jamie McLaren, one of the all-time leading goal scorers, might even be the all-time leading goal scorer in the A-League, the 30-year-old. He's definitely someone to keep an eye out on. Also, if he plays Max Capujo, he's quite a promising player, might be someone, once we scout him, that we do have a look at and might be someone we try and sign to become a New Zealander because so far, no international caps for Australia. Those type of players are the ones we do want to grab in this save once we do establish ourselves as an A-League club. So far, they form a little bit mixed up until the Australian Cup and also a game against Canberra, who, to be fair, everyone seemed to be beating. So not too sure how strong that form is, but hopefully, with this one being at home, we can pick up a decent result. No injury concerns, and we'll come back shortly and try and get the job done over City in the A-League. And here are the team sheets for this second A-League game of today's episode. We've just made a few changes from that first one. Negro over Elliot at right back, because Elliot's coming back from international break. A little bit tight, and also a Hitarin over Sinclair on the right wing. He just looks like he might be a better option. There are Melbourne City, got those big names I mentioned before, and also Caputo in central attacking midfield does look like they're going with quite a narrow formation, but hopefully we can continue our pretty good start to the season and keep ourselves up there near continental qualifying. And in fact, a very early highlight in this one might be in our favour of throwing here inside the final third. Lobo finds his way onto the ball, plays that one back to Oxborough, our Australian defensive midfielder so far doing a decent job. Now Negro finds some space there. Gun that right hand side, tries to put that one into the mixer. I think a save there from Young, or it came off the post, but that probably a bit of a tight angle to try the shot from. And now a chance here for City to do something on the counter attack. McLaren was on the ball, but thankfully we get that one back. Still nil all, but a good early chance for us there inside the first couple of minutes. And just past the halfway mark of this first half, next highlight, very similar to the way the first one started a throw in inside the final third. We flick that one on there, City try and clear it, but thankfully Tormine plays that one back, and we are still on the attack now. Negro, very similar highlight to the first one, but this time he will beat Jamie Young and Stefan Negro coming in for Cullen Elliott today off the back of that international break where he did play quite a bit. We'll score a goal. Not against his former club, just to double check that he used to be of the victory, not of Melbourne City. I was wondering, I didn't know he came from a Melbourne club, just wanted to make sure which one, because it could have been the old traditional FM thing there, where a player does score against their former club, but Negro scores one against his former Crosstown rivals, but that is a good start from him, good chance early in the game, and this time he puts that one away and gives us a 1-0 lead. And just making our way down to the last couple of minutes of this first half, and it looks like we might go into the sheds here with a 1-0 lead, albeit might have spoken too soon as City are on the ball, albeit good interception there, I think it was from Oxborough, and Tormin will make his way forward here down the left-hand side, tight angle, takes on the shot, and I think that was a decent save there from Young in goal for Melbourne City. So, so far the highlights in this first half have been in our favour, albeit Nick Sullivan on an orange injury, might have to take him off at half-time for Tewa Tamer, another former player here, of Wellington Olympic, but it doesn't look like he anything will be coming from that corner that we did have. Oxborough did get the ball back, plays that one over to Nathan Lover, but then his pass does get cut out. They hoof that one deep, and I think that will indeed be it for the first half. That was a pretty good first half. All the highlights were pretty much in our favor, slightly on top in terms of stats, and thankfully got that goal just past the halfway mark through Stefan Negro to give us a 1 0 lead. Now, to be fair, everyone out there is playing pretty well, just that orange injury. To Nick Sullivan will play things safe. Taylor Tamer can come on for him, but otherwise, very happy with how that first half went. We'll get the second one underway with that 1 0 lead. And just like in that first game today that we did play against the Brisbane, Raw, an early highlight here in the second half. It was in favour of C, but thankfully, there, I think it was Tormine who got the ball back for us and a chance for us here to try and play out from the back and hopefully grab a cushion goal. Hopefully, make sure we pick up three more points here, and that would be a brilliant start to life in the A-League, especially in these games where we are playing the established teams. If we can pick up decent results here, should make sure we are not going to be in a relegation fight this season. So they're trying to clear their lines after we played that one forward for Bazookas, but thankfully Lobo is there to tidy things up now. A tamer, he's on the ball. Lots of space out right here for Negro, who scored that goal earlier. Gets him behind, tight angle yet again. Squares that one nicely for a Hitaran, who so far has had a brilliant start to life here at AFC Auckland, but this time skies that one over the bar, and we are still only 1-0 up. And just show the hour mark, there's a highlight here in Melbourne City, do look to play out from back, might be their first decent chance here to get on the score sheet, albeit it looks like there that Negro will tidy things up for us, he's having a blind there at right back in place of Callan Elliott, to be fair, wasn't going to start him, apart from the fact, as I said, that Elliott was coming back from that international break, where he played quite regularly for us 
with the All Whites where we picked up those semi-decent results. That draw against Paraguay before that 1-0 loss to Scotland, but now we're on the attack yet again. Lobo down that left-hand side plays that one back to Oxborough. Does his man there nicely and starts to make his way inside the box. Squares it nicely for Bazookas. He was onside as well, but misses the target. Does Gianni, and we are still only 1-0 in front, but he's on a 6.4, as are some other players. So I think Hassan Jello can come on for Gianni up front. Also, a Hataran struggling today. Jack Henry Sinclair can come on for him. And Luis Toomey can play as a central attacking midfielder. We'll bring him on in place of Stefan Malk. Also struggling today off the back of a pretty good start to life here previously at AFC Auckland. But we'll see if those changes can help us grab that cushion goal. Hopefully make sure we pick up all three points. And only a few minutes off the back of those mass changes in terms of our attack. There's another highlight here. And yet again, we are on the front foot. Lobo plays that one forward to Tormain. Makes his way inside the box. Gets brought down there from Ugarkovic. And I think that one... Did look like a penalty. It might be a chance for us here to finally put Melbourne City to bed here in the second half of this game. And thankfully VAR does agree that that was a penalty. And our take of this season is Tormin was in pretty good form coming in to today's episode in those games against Newcastle and also Canberra. He goes straight down the middle though. And Jamie Young just takes that one directly on his chest. And that was a very good chance for us. Unfortunately, Tormin did not take it. And right off the back of that, there is a free kick here to see McLaren will square that one nicely. They put it away, but thankfully they were offside there through the boot. And we are still only 1-0 up, but a big chance missed there from Tormina. And now he is down to a 6.2. So we might bring on the Rainiers in his place and put Jello out to the left wing with our last sub. As we should really have put this game to bed, but are still only 1-0 in front. And just about to make our way into the last 15 minutes of this game, and unfortunately City here might get a chance to try and grab an equaliser, which would feel pretty harsh. They float that one into the mixer. Basilage will punch that one away. Interesting option. Now Behich makes his way inside the box, tries to square that one nicely for Caputo. Thankfully, someone there gets a good block on it before McLaren with a cynical foul on Oxford, but hopefully not much more of that in this game as we still only hold our one goal lead. And just making our way now into the last 10 minutes of this game, and City yet again look like they might have the ball from this highlight, albeit it is a goal kick, but unfortunately we can't win it. Taylor pumps that one deep, and somehow McLaren here does get in behind our defence from a fair way, and he will put that one away. Jamie McLaren already with his sixth goal this season, albeit these guys are playing both Australian Cup football, which we're not, and also they are playing in Asia as well, so that's probably a factor in the amount of goals that he does have off the back of that. We'll chuck our wingers onto attack as well as our central attacking midfielder, and we'll see if we can find a way to pick up three points from this game, because that does feel very harsh. That miss penalty from Tormin before he came off might be costly. Looks like he might be a player who doesn't enjoy life when I hit the record button on OBS, but McLaren there somehow gets in behind our defense from that ball from Taylor and tucks that one away nicely past Basilage, now in the last 10 minutes of this game, and somehow this is locked up at 1-0. We'll see if anything else does happen in this one. Jack Henry Sinclair, yet again, not doing too well. We'll see if putting him onto a winger instead of an inside forward might help him, because so far, not really getting a tune out of him here at AFC Auckland, and also just debating if we should really try and be a bit wider in terms of our attack. We'll see if that worked. That's something that has worked before with this tactic as we make our way into three minutes of added time. But unfortunately, that does feel like a bit of a blown opportunity, especially with that penalty, which Tormin hit straight into the path of Jamie Young. But unfortunately, really good performance from us there. But it is a draw one all at home against Melbourne City. To be fair, not a bad result for a team who are new to the A League. But based on how that game did look in terms of the highlights that we did see, Feels like it should have been one where we did pick up all three points. Negro, very good, coming in at right back in place of Cullen Elliott for this game. But unfortunately, that late strike to Jamie McLaren does mean we just get one point from that home game. So far, I think our away form actually a bit better than our home form in the A-League. Thankfully, it does keep us in a good part of the table. But it does feel like there are a couple of drop points as Melbourne City grab a late equaliser at Mount Smart. So a very frustrating result there, second up in today's episode, but to be fair, still doing a pretty decent job for a first season in the A-League, about smack bang in the middle of the table, up in seventh there with AFC Auckland, not too far from an Asian continental qualifying spot, but with a pretty decent gap on those teams currently in a relegation battle, and one of those teams is our New Zealand rivals at the moment, in the Wellington Phoenix, they've not got off to a very good start, 
They've just lost 3-2 in the distance derby at home to the Perth Glory, so they're not doing too well. But thankfully at the moment, we're actually above them on the table, which is a little bit surprising, especially considering the Phoenix in real life are right up near the top of the A-League, but a pretty decent start to life for us here in terms of club football in the save the international job not going quite so well, albeit have been taking on some pretty good teams. But if you enjoyed today's episode, those two games in the A-League and also a recap of that international break, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video. And if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, make sure to also hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well. It is greatly appreciated. Tomorrow we'll come back. Just going to have a look at the upcoming schedule for us here at AFC Auckland. We do have some games coming up against Melbourne Victory and Adelaide United as well as MacArthur. They're doing a decent job, both Melbourne and MacArthur. But I think we might come back in late October and take on two of the new teams to the A-League. The two fake teams joining in this season in this game. We'll take on the Darwin Cyclones at home. And then, because it looks like these guys might not be here for too long, the way they're going bottom of the A-League with just one point from six games. We might do an away day and check out where Redcliffe play in the Morton Daily Stadium. We'll take on those guys away from home and that will be off the back of that international break. We've got games with New Zealand against both Uzbekistan and Algeria. Hopefully that second one is one where we can pick up a win. But we'll come back tomorrow hopefully still in decent form and hopefully two games that we should be winning to get some form before we play two big ones to end this week against Sydney FC and the Phoenix, our first New Zealand derby of the save. But until tomorrow for that double against Darwin and Redcliffe, thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on and I'll see you then. Cheers.